In this video, I want to talk about using SwiftUI inside your UIKit project, how to start and how to use it. If you have UIKit project, you can still benefit from using SwiftUI. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Let's get started. Okay, so this is our UIKit project, very simple. We have a vcontroller, which is basically empty, just a background, and it is uh, connected as a root view controller here. This is the progress bar that I did in the last video. You can check out the video to find out more. The link is down in the description. What we want to do is to add this progress bar into the view controller and add some interaction. Right now we have empty view controller. Let's add this SwiftUI progress bar to the UI kit view controller. In order to add the SwiftUI into the UI kit, we will use the UI hosting controller. And you can use this UI hosting controller like any other view controller inside the UI kit. You can use it as presenting view controller or you can embed it as a child view controller and use it inside your app. Inside the UI hosting controller, you can just init it with the root view and the root view is your Swift UI view. Okay, let's add it to our view controller. Let's import the Swift UI first. And let's create the child view controller using the UI hosting controller, as we saw inside the documentation. And here, the root view, this will be our progress bar, which is the Swift UI view. So simply just create it progress bar. We need to add it as a child view to our view controller. Also mean to add the subviews from this view controller and set the frame. Okay, let's run this. Okay, it works, but we are not there yet. Uh, we set the frame for the child view to be exact as a frame of this view. Uh, but let's now let's rotate it and see what happened. Because the frame is fixed, it will not work. Let's add the proper constraints. Yeah, you remember those <laughs> from the UI kit. Let's remove the frame and let's add the NS layout constraints. We can use this one to activate them and pass the whole array with the necessary constraints. If you don't remember, those are the constraints that we used to use in the UI kit. The leading anchor is the one on the left, trailing is the one on the right. So we are connecting our child view controller view to the parent view. So this way it will be added as centered as before, but it will react to our rotations. And don't forget to set this one. Translate auto resizing mask to false because by default this one will try to create auto resizing masks, so we need to set it to false for this in order to work. Let's run it, and as you can see, we are rotating this. Let's use this one. You can also rotate using the command and and the arrows right and left. It works as expected. Okay, so we have a basic use case. We have added the SwiftUI view to the view controller. Now let's connect them and add some interactions. Now let's add the UI button and we will use the UI kit to add it. So we have the button right here, but let's remove it. Actually, we need to move this one. because we will still need it, but we don't need this button. So we can comment this out. We still have this uh, start function, which is starting our progress bar, and we will try to use it or invoke this start function from the UI button. 
So we have the uh, progress bar and let's add the UI button using the UI kit. Just a simple button. Let's add the title. And let's set the color. Also, don't forget to use this one and turn off the authorizing mask. To add the button, we can use the old stack view. And we'll have the Charlie view controller view and the button. Let's set the stack view for the axis vertical because we just want to have this view and the button down below. And add the sub view to our parent view. Turn off the masks. And right now we don't need those. We just need the stack view to have the same constraints, but add it to the view. Training and let's also add the center. So the stack view uh, will be center on the Y anchor. Okay, let's run it. And yeah, as you can see, we have the progress bar and the button. The button is not connected yet. Let's add the target to the button. First, let's create a function. Let's just print something here and add target to the button. Don't forget to annotate this one as Objective C because we are <laughs> inside the UI kit. And touch down. And as you can see, the button works. Okay, so now we need to call this start function from the view controller. In order to do this, we need to access the child view controller, this one, inside our start function. So let's move this one, the child view controller, as a fireball inside our start function. We can just call the root view because we know that the root view is the progress bar view because it's like because the UI hosting controller is generic, we know that it is here the progress bar. So we know that the root view controller is our progress bar. So we can just call it start and it will be from this one. Okay, let's start it. And let's tap start. And as you can see, <laughs> nothing is happening. Let's explain what is going on here. Inside our progress bar, Inside the start function, let's print the width of the container because the container, because the progress is being calculated using the container. So if the container is zero, the whole progress will be zero. So let's run it, and as you can see, the container is zero. So this is not working because we are trying to access the state from outside where the state has been installed on a view. We can fix it by adding an observable object here, which will connect and store all of those values. State should only be used and managed inside the SwiftUI, inside the SwiftUI scope. There is also another solution. We can add the pass-through subject and subscribe on it and execute an action when an event is emitted by a publisher. So yeah, let's start with a simpler solution. Here we can add a pass-through subject. Let's import the combine first and add the pass-through subject. It will be void because we just need to uh, start it and here will be never because it is not failing. So as you can see, the subject, when we will call it, it will broadcast and we can subscribe on it. And we'll, when we will subscribe on it, we can uh, 
execute some actions. So we need to subscribe on this pass-through subject here inside the Swift UI. Let's do this maybe on the on the vstack. So on received and we are listening for this start subject. And let's call start our function. So we are still inside the Swift UI. We just need to call this, the pass through subject from our view controller. So let's go here. Instead of calling start directly, let's call the start, start sub and send. So this one will send the void value to the subscriber and the subscriber here will receive it and start our function. Okay, let's run this. And as you can see, we have the connection. Okay, let's remove it and let's add the view model. And the view model will conform to observable object. Observable object is a type of object with a publisher that emits before the object has changed. Let's move those to our view model. We need to change the state property wrapper to published. A property with the published attribute creates a publisher of its type. When the property changes, the publishing will occur and SwiftUI will automatically listen for those changes and recreate the body of a view which has those properties. By default, an observable object synthesizes an object will change publisher that emits the changed value before any of its published properties changes. Okay, let's add our view model to the view. We need to use observed object property wrapper here. This way we will subscribe on our view model and SwiftUI will invalidate the view each time the data will change. Okay, let's fix our errors and add the VM here. So basically each variable needs to be called from this view model. And don't forget to add the progress bar view model to our preview. We need to also fix some issues here inside the view controller. Add the view model. As before, let's call the start. And let's run it. And as before, you can see that this works. To make it more clear how a published uh, variables works and how this uh, variable is being stored, let's subscribe on it here inside the view controller. Let's add the ending cancelable. Oh, let's import the combine here. As you can see, we have different variables here, the one with the regular ones. So this is like the progress title, this is a string, and also the progress title and all of those that will start with the dollar sign. When you will use the dollar sign, it will be using the publisher. And this is what we want to do, because we want to subscribe on this one, pass the value, and we can print it. So we are accessing the, the progress title or we are subscribing on it. So each time the progress title will change the published, this one, the published will change the, the, the variable, we will, it will print here. Let's start it. Let's open the console. As you can see, the title was empty at the beginning, then we have the zero, so it is already printing. 
and when we tap start it is updating so i hope that this is more uh, clear now okay last but not least let's call a function in ui kit from the swift ui because right now what we'll be doing is we are calling the swift ui from our ui kit and now we can try and let's add this button once again so let's bring back this button here and let's call a new function on the ui kit and once again we will use the pass through subject let's add it here and let's bring back our button let's call it hide so we can for example hide something inside the ui kit and the hide sub will call send and inside the view controller we could actually subscribe not on this progress title but we can we can subscribe on this pass through subject what we could do is for example let's hide the child view so the start is still working we can just call hide and it will hide itself not very interesting use case but yeah just to prove how this works as you can see using SwiftUI in your existing UI kit project is really simple having a mix of both of them in one project lets you take advantage of how easy and fast it is to use SwiftUI and if something is not possible yet in SwiftUI you can always use UI kit components that's all what I have for you today I hope you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing for more videos like this thank you for watching and see you in the next one